This is uh, the pre-match interview for Bromley at home tomorrow night. Uh, I think we'll start with the injuries. Obviously, you saw Dion go off uh, on Saturday with a suspected collarbone injury. Uh, just wondered how he is and how long we can expect him out for. So, he is as we first feared. He has fractured his collarbone. Um, that was made very apparent to me as he was le leaving the field of play. Obviously, Steve Snell in the medical man told me as soon as he come across to me on the bench that it was a, a broken collarbone. Um, he had the x-ray on Saturday evening. That was confirmed Saturday evening. Obviously, we've got him a specialist appointment tomorrow just to go through what they need to do, whether they need to pin it or not. Um, Steve's quite content with with the, the break in terms of it fusing back. We're very similar to what Josh Reese done last year. Um, and that was a, probably about an eight to 10 week period. So look, yeah, it's unfortunate for him. Um, gutted for the lad, like I said to you after the game, that it's just that he hasn't been able to get his game going. And I feel for him because he is away from home. He is down in, in a player's house and it's, it's not good being injured let alone being injured and away from your family. So we will give him a program to adhere to. Um, there's not much you can do with your upper body, but there is still fitness and bike and all them bits that, to ensure that he can maintain the fitness and not only that, being healthy in his mind. He loves being around the place. It's a good environment. So it's nice to have him in and amongst it. He was in for our prep today. He come up for lunch with the players and yeah, we just need to make sure we support him as best we can. Yeah, of course. Well, wish him the best. So it's obviously quite a quick turnaround from Saturday. Uh, how has the squad recovered? Uh, we did see Lee go off. It looked like he maybe had some ice around his hamstring. Just wondering how the squad recovered from Saturday. Yeah, so we're assessing Lee. He hasn't managed to train today. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to leave that another 24 hours with regards to that. There's a couple with bruises and bumps, as you expect, after a tough tie against Maidstone. So... Yeah, we did train today. We got a little bit into them in terms of how we want to set up and how we feel we can affect Bromley and their strengths. And yeah, no, nah, listen, it was a massive factor for us last year to ensure that we got the average age down. And we've done that in terms of having people on the training pitch as opposed to having second day recoveries. And I think you're seeing that in our games. A lot of our goals are coming at the back end of the, the games. And for me, it's very much. That's because of obviously the way in which we have brought in the likes of a Brunty, a Broadbent. These are lads that are all younger, a lot more athletic. Yes, we brought in some older heads in Newton and Jack Payne, but they're at the right age of 30 as opposed to the lads we had last year that were at the wrong age of 30. But no, we had a good session today, good prep day, good organisation. Like I said, in terms of us in prepping Bromley, no, nah, it's been positive. Real positive start to the week and let's hope we can go and maintain that tomorrow evening against Bromley. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, Bromley, it's a fourth versus fifth uh, position. What are you expecting from that, from that game? I think they're excellent. And I'm not saying this to build them up and give them any, any pressure. I genuinely think they're an excellent side. I think that they had a really good nucleus last year. Like, likes of Webster, likes of Sir Wimney, Bingham. Cheat, cheat 20 goals a year without even thinking. Whiteley. Um, and he's brought in Hanam, brought in Reynolds. These are two lads that I think down that left-hand side have been really productive for them. The likes of Bush ain't even getting in the team. And I like Chris Bush. I think he's very productive at, at this level. He's got great quality, has a long throw. But for me, Venins has done really well. He, he dovetailed between Forster and um, Jude Arthurs on that right wing-back channel. They all have a way of playing and they're very good at it. Their set plays are excellent. Um, so Wimney's got four goals already and that's with big goals. They score clusters of threes in their last prior to Solio two games, uh, Maidstone and Oldham. I think they're a very good team. I think he's a very good manager. I think they have a very good way of playing. Um, yeah, I have to say, I think they're excellent and we'll have a, a task on our round tomorrow evening. Um, it's a great opportunity, great test for us. Great test for us. We're on a we're on a fantastic run ourselves. We're on a superb run, and we're very positive. The mood in the camp's great, and I keep saying, if we concentrate on what we do, 
we don't fear anyone. And that's not arrogance. It's just purely a confidence that we've got in the, in the ranks. And I think that our second half performance on Saturday was phenomenal. I've watched it back and I say to the group, when I watch the games back, it's normally not as bad as it is or not as good as it is. But I thought we were good second half. I've watched it back. We were very good. And getting balls in areas, getting bodies in the box. And that's saying that we need to be better at. And we worked on it, said to you, we worked on it today, certain solutions in the final third because we feel that there's little bits in their game that we can affect. And that's something we need to ensure we emphasise tomorrow to get three points. Brilliant. Well, my final question is, great run of form. How do you ensure that the team can maintain that run? I think what happens is competition is massive. And I think there's people knocking on my door. And I said that to the BT team on Saturday that I've got strikers knocking on my door asking questions why they're not starting and how they, what they need to do to start. And I think that the, the competition within the group aids that. I honestly believe that. You look at Georgie Williams comes in for Dion Kelly Evans. George Broadbent comes in for Josh Reese. Um, yeah, Lien Love comes in for Danny Elliott. People have to perform. People have to perform. If they want to stay in the team, they have to perform. And that's, yes, there's a pressure to that. Of course there is. But for me, that's how you're successful. That's why t- good teams go and win leagues because of their squad. And we've made a very conscious effort this year to maintain a good 16. We have tried to keep it at 19. Unfortunately, for a couple of long-term injuries, Erico being one now, Dion Kelly Evans, Jamal, Jamal Firefield and Mark Ricketts are near in a return more so than the other two. But yeah, I've been very fortunate that the chairman has backed that because I genuinely believe a squad is what you need in this division to maintain a charge. And there may be a couple of enforced changes tomorrow because of injuries or knocks or bumps and bruises, but I'm looking at that squad and anyone that goes in, I believe in trusting them. And with three games in seven days, I might make changes myself to ensure that the freshness aids us as opposed to goes against us. And for me, I need to pick the best 11 possible to go and get the result. And that's what I think personally at the minute is maintaining them levels is the competition within the group. And I've got to be honest with you, we are looking to add, I had a conversation with the chairman, we are looking to add two or three. We say we see the same game in the chairman and Straight away after the game, we said a comment to each other and we both agreed. And then I spoke to him again on the Sunday. And I honestly believe that we need to possibly free in the building. And he, he said, yeah, 100% agree with that. We're not resting on our laurels. And that's saying that experience allows you to improve. And the experience from last year and where we got to them, them dizzy heights of second in the division and, and falling so far off it, that experience has been massive and you do a post-mortem in life, we're doing a very much a pre-mortem where we're trying to find the solutions earlier as opposed to doing the post-mortem at the end and what if we did this, what if we'd done that. So yeah, competition in the group for me, going back to your question, is aiding us to maintain the levels. People want to keep their shirt and for me, that's what's allowed for us to go eight unbeaten and the competition week in, week out. You look at Georgia Williams comes on the pitch. The training on a weekly basis allows for him to go and perform for 85 minutes on Saturday. Look at Dave Stevens. Dave Stevens didn't touch the ball in anger four or five games ago. He's gone and been, in my opinion, one of the standout performers in the last four or five games. And we haven't got a B team. We haven't got a reserve side. It's the training levels, the competition week in, week out, which is aiding our boys when called upon, they deliver on a performance.